Okay, taking a bit of a side trip here, we're talking about a concept called buffering, or chemical mixtures that are called buffers. We care about these a lot in biology because what a buffer is good at is it can stabilize the pH of a solution so that it's very difficult to change it. And that's a big deal if you have, say, some kind of liquid flowing through your blood vessels that you want to keep at a constant pH. If, uh, if a human's blood changes its pH by as much as 0.1, either up or down, they're probably hospitalized and dying because their red blood cells start to malfunction. There's only a very narrow range of pHs in which we can live. And so our blood contains a bunch of buffers that keep the pH from changing all that much. If you're storing contact lenses or some medications that are stored in liquid, those have to be kept at a pretty specific pH for them to work properly. And so we want to control the pH and we use buffers for that. So how do you make a buffer? Basically two ways. One way is you can take a weak acid mixed with its conjugate base. And your other option is you can take a weak base mixed with its conjugate acid. If you do either of those things, you will end up with a buffer solution. So let's set one up and let's see what it looks like and then we'll throw some acids and bases at it and see what they do. So I'm going to go with weak acid and conjugate base and weak acid, my favorite example is HF because it's quick to write. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid and its conjugate base is what it looks like with the hydrogen off, that would be fluoride ion. So here is a container, let's pour some water into it And then we'll put in some hydrogen fluoride, or hydrofluoric acid. Now, what does this do when you put it in water? Answer, not a heck of a lot. It's a weak acid, so for the most part it just floats around refusing to dissociate. You might occasionally get an H3O and a fluoride out of this, but for the vast majority of them, they're just going to float around in the water and do nothing. So we have HF molecules drifting around in solution. Now we add some fluorides, and we get a mixture like this. Whoops, sorry. Just automatically writing H's. That's supposed to be a fluoride. F, F, F. These don't have to be present in exactly equal amounts, but we usually keep them pretty close. So this is a buffer solution, and here's why. Let's think about what happens if we tried to change its pH. What happens if we add H3O to this? In other words, we add some kind of strong acid to the solution to try to acidify it. Well, if you think about your acid base table, if you want to know what kind of reactions are happening in an acid base system, you read down the left side of the list looking for an acid that you have, and the first hit that you will get is H3O. So this is our strongest acid. When you read up the right side looking for your strongest base, we don't really have significant amounts of OH in here, but you will find F-. H3O will react with F- in this situation, and what will that give us? This will give away a hydrogen. and we'll get water. So what just happened? We poured very strong acid into the solution and it reacted with the solution but that turned this into a weak acid. This tiger here that was looking to acidify the whole solution has been turned into a docile little kitty cat that hardly dissociates at all. The acidity of this chemical has been pretty much neutralized because it, it reacted with the buffer. Instead of a top six or a top seven acid, we now have a mediocre weak acid. What happens if we add a base? If we put hydroxide in this solution, certainly that's our strongest base, but HF is right there. If you put hydroxide, a super strong base, into the solution, it'll react with the HF 
and we'll get this gains a hydrogen, this loses a hydrogen. And again, where in this case we had a super strong acid and it got transformed into a wimpy acid, here we had a super strong base and it got changed into a weak base. And you can say, well, yeah, it still destroyed an acid. Well, it destroyed an acid that wasn't doing anything. So did this really change the pH? Not really, because this acid wasn't releasing a hydrogen. It was just sitting there waiting for a base to neutralize. If you're an acid, this solution is a trap because it's got all these bases that will jump on you as soon as you appear in the solution, and they'll tie you up. And you'll manage to acidify them, but they still won't be very effective. They won't be as effective as you would have been. This dissociates 100%. This dissociates a couple percent if you're lucky. Same thing with the base. Super effective base replaced with mediocre base that doesn't do very much. So that's how a buffer solution works. It contains weak acids that will neutralize any base you put in. It contains weak bases that will neutralize any base that you put in. And so anything you do to try, try to change the pH just doesn't work very well. Now, you can overwhelm a base, certainly. If you put an H3O in here, it'll react with one of these Fs and turn it into an HF. And you could say, well, that didn't make much difference. If you add another one, another F will tie you up. That didn't make much difference either. Add another hydrogen, still not much difference. And another one. You can see we're running out of fluorides. If you keep adding base, now the buffer has done all it can. And if you keep adding hydrogen, now the hydrogen will start to stack up and your pH will drop and the solution will go acidic. So a, bit, a buffer can only do so much. And if we add base to this, the same thing can happen where first you'll burn up all the free hydrogen in the system. And then if you keep adding base, you'll pick off all these weak acids. Those hydrogens will go away. This would be just pouring hydroxide into the system. All these acids will give away their hydrogen. And if you keep doing this, you can eat up all the hydrogen that's available in the system. The buffer's running out of strength here. It's fighting you and it's holding you off, but it can only do it for so long. You'll eventually get to this point where there's no HF left. And now if you keep adding base, that base will start to accumulate and the pH will climb. So buffers aren't magic. They can't hold off an acid or a base forever, but they can keep the pH level for a long time as long as they have more ions to work with. Fair enough? Let's see what kind of questions they ask about this. Just writing reactions. If you have the following buffering system, so here we have, this is a weak acid, and this is its conjugate base, so yeah, this is a buffer, and they're saying, what does this do if you add hydronium ion to it? Well, if you add hydronium, certainly this is the strongest acid. It's like the strongest acid that can exist in water. Who will be the base? If you look on your acid base table, this is kind of a base. This is a much stronger base. So the HPO42 minus will react with this. And what happens? This gives away a hydrogen. So our super strong acid has turned into water and the other thing that happens this gains a hydrogen so our super so our base has turned into a kind of mediocre weak acid uh, what did I miss there h2po4 sorry okay so mega strong acid turns into weak acid that's the buffer working carbonic acid and bicarbonate ion when we put in OH Certainly OH is our strongest base. The strongest acid out of these two is the carbonic acid. Base gains hydrogen. Acid gives away hydrogen. And there you go. Again, very strong base gets poured in, but a moment later it's been replaced by a weak base that is much less effective. So much less effect on the pH. And same buffer if we add H3O. If 
we use H3O. Of these two, the stronger base is bicarbonate ion or hydrogen carbonate ion. H3O gives away a hydrogen. This gains, sorry, this loses a hydrogen. There, there's what it looks like after. This gains a hydrogen, so this will turn into carbonic acid. So, very, very strong acid gets replaced by much weaker acid.